of the greatest pieces of entertainment in the world of movies are films that center around messing with time. And it goes without saying that Glock Stoppers is the best one. However, we know that with video games that we have even more avenues to explore with the idea. More avenues than I'm used to tackling in one of these videos. So, as usual, I'll be picking games that stand out to me, but I'll be moving at a brisker pace. Within the wide world of edutainment games, Carmen Sandiego went everywhere. Where in the USA, where in Europe, where in the world, where in space, and after all these dumbfoundingly where in North Dakota's Carmen Sandiego? Come on! I was just about to get to where in time is Carmen Sandiego. How can you get any more broad than space and time? And they had to make one about North Dakota? Anyway, it doesn't play that differently from the others. They kick you back in time to where the problem is, and then you jump around based on the different clues. Put together the warren and catch the baddie, usual Carmen stuff. What does play differently is Mario's time machine on the Super Nintendo. That actually made you punch in the time and location into a time machine. It's got these fill in the blank tests too, but they're just part of the buildup of excitement like a roller coaster, man, because you gotta go time surfing to get anywhere. Mario has to visit the proper period of time and return the correct item that Bowser stole. Except for maybe these guys. What's that, Founding Fathers? You want the Declaration of Independence back? You're not my dad! Besides, you're all right here. Can't you just write another one? Very well, Mario, my good friend. With your help, we have created a great new country. Perhaps one day, your likeness will appear carved into a mountain. Well, at least he was able to make good on that part. Much like edutainment games like those, time travel in games is often just an excuse to explore new settings, opening up the possibilities for new enemies and weapons as well. Time Splitters Time Splitters 2 lived in my friend's GameCube for quite some time when it first came out. It didn't matter if it was a future man with a laser gun, a jester with a shotgun in gothic 80s Paris, or a big Tony with a Tommy gun in 30 Chicago. Time Splitters confirmed my very unique talent of aiming poorly with a controller. Big Apple, 3 a.m. Next up in terms of settings for me is Turtles in Time. I never really got into beat em ups or have even played many in that genre, but I'm really glad I have this one. Uncle Phil and Krang had to go and steal the Statue of Liberty right at pizza time and banish the turtles into a time warp leaving them to fight beasts like prehistoric turtle stars and a bunch of buffoons on a pirate ship. No need to find a plank to walk off of Foot Clan, cause Donnie brought one. Though I just said that I didn't play a lot of beat-em-ups, one other game that I liked in that genre segues into the next category that I'll be talking about, which is the usage of time manipulation in gameplay. Head to the go-go, baby! Beautiful Joe. This game had really impactful and satisfying punches and kicks, thanks to traditional action movie visual effects. Besides moving fast, mock speed can set yourself, enemies, and objects on fire, in addition to clones fighting with you. Slow-mo lets you dodge and makes hits and explosions more destructive. I've seen that Joe slow-mo punch a helicopter. And speaking of slow-mo, there's a good deal of shooters that played around with time abilities, like Singularity. In this game, you have the TMD, or Time Manipulation Device for short. It gives you powers like shooting balls that freeze time in a radius, and messing with the aging process of objects and enemies, along with a few others that pair nicely with acute lead poisoning from your bullets. This game stood out because it not only not took itself that seriously, but it's also made by Raven Software, and they made two of my favorite games, the last two Star Wars Jedi Knight games and the powers in Singularity remind me of some of the Force powers in those. But not to get too off track, because even though Singularity is a time-centric shooter, many say the first real shooting game that messed with time manipulation was Max Payne. Max Payne's famous bullet time mechanic seems to be the frontrunner for this idea, an example for every other shooter to come after it that did anything similar. There are a number of action platform games that have time manipulation, and when that's a factor in the game, you usually have puzzles that go hand in hand with it. These next few games all have their own spin on it to varying degrees. Man, here I am talking about time stuff, and this guy over here's got a big old knife that's all about that life. 
Prince of Persia Sands of Time has a lot of awesome things going for it, especially the ability to rewind and fix your dumb mistakes. You screw up your dang parkour, please be kind and rewind. You get into a tough encounter that goes sour, rewind it. Maybe not everyone that wants to get into a tough scrap that goes badly wants to go back to the bonfire. Huh? You ever consider that? You never even asked me. Sands of Time mostly focused on action, whereas the indie classic Braid centered on puzzles. It makes you think and plan out how you use your time powers. The game has an ability you eventually get where you record your movements, allowing a copy of yourself to play back to help you solve conundrums. And concerning recording yourself, there's a game that covers everything that the front of most VCRs would have had. This is Blinks. Blinks the Time Sweeper. Blinks has it all. Fast forward to accelerate, rewind to undo actions and fix things, record to make a copy of yourself, pause, which is my favorite and also tough not to make a JoJo reference to, a straight up instant rewind aka retry since you can be taken out in a single hit, and a slow to make everything move at a sluggish pace. Equipable with a number of different sweepers, you use your powers to clean up the crud what litters this place. And that crud is monsters that are messing everything up. Now how time control is handled in this game is certainly different from anything else so far. To use any one particular power, you have to collect specifically colored crystal things in a certain order to acquire the ability you want. This can get a little frustrating at times, but I can see what they were trying to do to a small degree, just to make sure you mix it up more or just being careful with what you pick up. I had fun with this game. It did good at getting more difficult as it progressed, and even though it had some problems, it did good enough to get a sequel. A sequel that I didn't play because this video has too many games already. Oh, and by the way, it's still not too late to go back and make this guy your mascot, Microsoft. I get the feeling that Master Chief hasn't really been pulling his weight around there lately. For a number of different licensed games, they often have a ton of material to go back to. And in the world of video games, they get you to revisit that material only this time as a player. They often get you to those different scenarios because, oops, time travel, go do it! <laughs> However, outside of licenses, there are a number of great games where story is a bigger focus. I Feel Like Life is Strange was a surprise to everyone when it first came out, with its great execution of rewinding time amidst the cinematic storytelling. And kinda like Prince of Persia did, you were able to rewind time if you didn't like the outcome of something. And compared to a prince with a dang nice dagger, an angsty teenager needs all the help they can get. In the previous episodes of Life is Strange, some poor hipster lost their vape. Episode 6, Return of the Vape. Stein's Gate is an incredible tale of the self-appointed Mad Scientist Hoin Kyoma. He and the comrades of his laboratory in a twist of fate forge a microwave that has the capability of sending text messages to the past. Its presentation and storytelling was so awesome that an anime series that stayed very faithful to the game came about. It's not only one of the best anime I've ever seen, it also bolsters my already strong faith in DK Pepper. And then finally we have Callahan's Cross Time Saloon, one of the coolest adventure games to go back to. Based on the books written by Spider Robinson, the game released in 1997 and booted from DOS. The game is stuffed to the brim with reactions to objects, detailed art, and dialogue, most of which is voice acted. Here's a bit from when you trick your way into getting a limo ride to the airport. Swank. Yes, look, TV set, VCR, bar, telephone, fax machine. Look, a jacuzzi. Wait, what'd you say was in there? A jacuzzi. So she runs the corner with this giant sack and I say to her, those aren't chopsticks, they're my golf clubs. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Hey, could you hold on for just a second? Yeah, sure. Hey, can man. we not take these turns so fast, man? I'm sloshing back here. He's sloshing you? Yeah, he's sloshing me back here. Callahan's is a place where tons of beings from all over the universe pull up a chair and partake in beverages. The main character is Jake, a folk singer who decides to lend a helping hand to any patrons that might need it. And some of those patrons have you traveling all over the place. Brazil, Transylvania, and yes, travels through time are involved. Sometimes sparking discussions of logistics of such. Why'd we take the subway? Why not just zap us here? Or are the time police not supposed to take riders? Time we can handle. Space, we're not quite there yet. 
I want to go from time to time, I can do it. I want to go from place to place, I have to hoof it, just like everybody else. Here I thought you could do anything. Picking up snacks for the trip home? We can if you want, but we'll be home in a few minutes. Explain. Didn't you see the time machine? Yeah, but it wasn't working. Did you plug it in? Uh, I didn't think of it. I really can't do Callahan's enough justice with what little I've said, but... I just covered so many games in this video already. No Ocarina of Time, no Majora's Mask, no Chrono Trigger, the most shameful of all! No Pot-Pot travels through time. I gotta cut it off somewhere. Now with all this talk of time, I think it's time to go smoke some hamburgers. You seen those burgers in Beautiful Joe? They're almost as big as he is! Yummy! To everyone that stopped by, thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by liking it and subscribing. Links to stuff in the description and the theme of the last video was unconventional cars! And that about does it for me this time. This is Officer Dan reminding you to take it easy.